Hello, this is Steve Olson from It's a CAD World. In this example, we're going to take a look at how to control a, an assembly through parameters and iLogic. So, what we're going to look at here is in this assembly, we already have several parameters that, con that we want to use to control our file. We want our rail length to be how long the file is, or how long the assembly is the height from the ground up to the top of the rail, the color that we're going to use, then how many intermediate posts we have. In this case we have five turned on right now. So we want the user to be able to define how many uh, each of these properties and then have the assembly update for that. We're going to do that through iLogic. So far these parameters have been created and not linked to anything at all. These parameters are going to be used to, to, to further configure this file. So I'm going to go ahead and say done here. And I'm going to come down to my iLogic browser under iLogic uh, rail assembly. Right click and say add a rule. This rule is going to be used to configure the assembly so I'm going to call this configure rail. The thing I want to do is I want to extract the value out of my number of intermediate post values. So I'm going to just create a variable here called posts. Tell it that that is equal to the value, the value in a string. Here. My user parameter number of intermediate posts. We're going to utilize that value at a number of locations um, in this. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to push a couple parameters into the uh, the frame of the rail. The two vertical posts, the two end vertical posts, and the horizontal rail are all part of a frame generator file. So if I go to this rail skeleton here in this tree, under my model parameters you'll see I have a height and length. So let's start with height so the parameter rail skeleton height is going to be equal to in this assembly my user parameter called rail height then I'm going to do the same thing with the length so under model parameters of the frame generator length and that is going to equal to my user parameter rail length the next thing I want to do is I want to set the I want to set the length of one of these lower rails right here. So if I in my model tree here, if I expand out the lower rail, you'll see that I have some model parameters. And there's a model parameter sorry, a user parameter <coughs> called length. I'm going to set that equal to an equation. We're going to start by taking our rail length, we're then going to subtract posts, our intermediate posts, plus two, because for the each of the end, and those are each inch and a quarter, inch and a half tube. So I'm going to multiply that by inch and a half, and that's going to be then divided by. the number of posts plus one because we have an extra post in there or actually no, it's actually the posts um, is going to is kind of I'm using that to determine how many sections I have and each of the gradings there are going to be uh, equal to how many posts I have plus an additional one the next thing I want to do is I want to set my color so in this case here, I'm going to um, start an if-then statement. The reason for this is that inside this model, not all of the um, colors that I have picked for my multi-value for my colors are actually current colors in Inventor. 
So I'm going to have to run through a little translation here to, if it's certain colors, to change them to the inventor name. So I'm going to say, if color is blue, then something I've termed inventor color is going to equal something called blue wall paint glossy. We're going to use an else if, else if color equals green, then inventor color is going to equal dark green. One more else if. Else if color equals no paint, because this is actually a scenario that maybe the user or the customer doesn't want this painted. Then the inventor color is going to equal steel. There's a few other colors here that actually their names match up properly to inventor colors. So my else statement here is going to be else inventor color equals whatever we've determined for whatever the user has entered in for color. Okay. So the next statements here are actually really just going to be uh, a bunch of duplicates here that are going to set the color file or the color parameter in each of the the components to whatever we determine inventor color is. Um, so it, it's just basically you know, the parameter of that part file called color is equal to inventor color. And that's just a bunch of repetitive statements. Um, if we were going to paint our assembly, we could have just set the, uh, the color of the assembly here at the top level. But this is just a scenario if we wanted to set um, the color uh, in each individual part file for whatever reason. Okay. The next one is going to get into what's going to happen with some of our posts if we have them all suppressed or if we have a collection of some on or some off. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say if posts equals zero, then components is active. So just which component I'm dealing with. This is going to be called intermediate post one. equals false. And I'm going to have a couple, of, I'm going to have one of these for each of the posts. So I'll be covered if I have all of my posts turned off, but what if I need a mixture of some on, some off? What I've done is I've created a couple if, the, or four next loops that will turn appropriate ones off and turn appropriate ones on. So I'm going to say if posts is greater than zero, because I don't want this to happen if all of my uh, posts are turned off. Then what is it going to do? I'm going to create a for i equals one two posts, and so it's basically from from one to how many ever posts I have. It's going to then deal with where I have it create something called this post, and its name is going to be. intermediate post and then whatever the value is for I. Then we're going to have a component is active this post. I'm going to take the quotations off so it reads it as a variable and not a string equals true. 
next i. For net uh, for next for i equals posts plus one to five because that's my max maximum number of posts. And it's going to basically be the exact same statement I had here, except for the statement is going to be component is active false. Next I. And then uh, one more thing that we'll need to do in this rule is because in some cases that the, the post or uh, the intermediate post is not dealt with in some cases so we'll have to put a couple color and uh, also set its height inside this if then loop so inside our immediate posts I have this post file I'm going to set its length or BL which is the um, is also a parameter for the length equals whatever our rail height is subtract 1.6875 and that's because we have to subtract off the height of the upper rail which is um, which is an inch and a half and then the plate on the bottom of the feet is uh, 3 sixteenths thick so we're going to subtract that value off so our rail is the appropriate height then we're going to do something very similar with the color the color here is going to be equal to whatever inventor color is stated as two more things we need to do is we need to set the height and width of the grate right here under its model parameters I have a length and height so I just need to set those to the appropriate value for cannot forget to end if my previous end if loop so I need to set my grate length to be whatever the parameter for my length for my lower rail is because it's going to match up with that. So whatever the length of the grate is, or the grate is going to be equal to whatever the length of the lower rail is. And then also the height, whatever rail height is, subtract 50. It's basically the, the bottom rail is a foot off the ground and then we have two rail uh, rail widths which are inch and a half each. So that's basically the result of a rail height subtract the foot for the location of the bottom rail, the width of the bottom rail, and the width of the top rail. One more statement here and then this will be done. We're going to use from over here under document the, um, the update when done which basically tells the view to update this model whenever it's completed. So I had a couple typos there that I had to clean up, so I've cleaned up those, so I'll go ahead and say OK here. See, it's kind of reading those parameters already. So let's take a look at modifying this. And to make things easier, let's create a form to do this. So I'm going to jump over to the Forms tab of my iLogic browser, right-click and Add Form. We'll call this form configure rail. And again, our the, the things that we're going to worry about is our user parameters of rail length, rail height, color, and the number of intermediate posts. So we made our we added our form here, we kind of got it so we were able to add some spaces over here and add some words to make so uh, makes a little bit more sense. So we'll go ahead and say OK here. Now let's use our form to make some changes. So I'm going to go to my configure rail form. I'm going to let's change this down to uh, maybe 150. Let's change our rail height to maybe 48. We're going to change our paint maybe to green. And let's change our number of posts down to something a little bit shorter or fewer. So there we've got this assembly all configured through passing of parameters. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much for watching this video on uh, It's a CAD World. Please continue to look for other iLogic videos and other Autodesk videos on this channel.